Welcome back to Turner Classic Movies. I'm Dave Carger, here for the second film in our double feature celebrating Disability Pride Month in July. I'm very happy to be back with Lawrence Carter Long, the co-director of DisArt and an expert on cultural representation of disabled people. Hello, Lawrence. Great to be back with you. Hi, Dave. Good to be with you again. Thank you. So the second film in our double feature also co-stars Harold Russell, the Oscar-winning star of The Best Years of Our Lives, which you just watched. Amazing to think that he didn't make another movie until 1980, and it was the one we're about to watch, Inside Moves, directed by Richard Donner and starring John Savage, Diana Scarwood, and David Morse. And how does it make you feel, Lawrence, to learn that it took 34 years for this two-time Academy Award-winning actor to get another opportunity to have a co-starring role in a feature film? Well, I think in order to really understand that, we have to put the film in context. You know, following the making of Best Years of Our Lives, Weiler basically told Russell, look, you should get out of acting, the acting gig, there aren't that many roles for an actor with no arms. And Russell took him at his word. He also felt that his experience with Best Years of Our Lives was so fantastic that how could he parallel it? Where could he go from there? And so he decided, I think, because of those combining factors, that he wouldn't act again. And it was Richard Donner who came to him after seeing the book on which Inside Moves is based, he thought immediately of Harold Russell and lobbied him to come back and to, and to star again in this movie, which Russell initially resisted. But after reading the script, he said, I love this script. If you can change the character's name, which in the original writing was Hooks, to Wings, I'm in. And Hooks was military slang dating back as far as Best Years of Our Lives that was used in rehab hospitals to describe uh, returning veterans who had no arms. So they made that change and Russell, there we go, after 34 years, was acting again. Yeah, my understanding is that Harold said to Richard Donner, I was only an actor once. And so it did take some convincing, but I'm so glad he did because this is a lovely little film. And even though Richard Donner also directed big films like the Superman movies with Christopher Reeve or the Lethal Weapon movies, you get the sense that this is a film that Richard Donner was very proud of. He said that this was in fact his favorite film. He had found the, the source material prior to doing Superman, but had forgotten about it. And it wasn't until he received a batch of scripts where he was reading it and said, wait a minute, this seems familiar to me, that it, it reoccurred to him that he was familiar with the source material and then decided that he wanted to kind of get back to basics. He wanted to get back to doing a simpler story uh, with hum about human beings and about different characters. And it was that that motivated him to make Inside Moves. Can you tell me a little bit more about some of the other themes in this film? I really enjoy this film. I think David Morse does a terrific job. John Savage, who is dealing with severe depression and suicidal thoughts at the beginning of the film, goes through a really interesting character arc. These are topics that I feel like came into the fore much more after World War II, but also after Vietnam. It's absolutely true. You know, um, John Savage's character originally had been a Vietnam veteran, but they changed that in the screenplay for the film because it was felt it was too closely connected to the deer hunter, which he had appeared in previously. And so they sort of took that little detail out. It's left to the viewer's imagination to try to understand what were the factors which led to the suicide attempt. But it's actually, that's the setup. The, the story itself is about life after the attempt. It's about coming together. It's about finding community. And that's what they do inside Max's bar where much of the film takes place. Within Max's bar, you see a hodgepodge, a cacophony of disabled characters, some who use wheelchairs, some who are blind, Harold Russell himself without arms. They're living in their own world. They're not trying to fit into what anybody else's expectations are. They feel comfortable. They feel at home. And in fact, that sense of home within Inside Moves was so great that when it was distributed internationally, the film was called Max's Bar. You definitely get the sense that it was a movie that didn't get the acclaim that it deserved at the time. So I'm really happy that we're showing it tonight. Yeah, it was released during Christmas with no promotion in one theater in Los Angeles. And so it was a film that not many people got an opportunity to hear about or think about or talk about or generate that kind of buzz which could lead more of an independent film like this 
to get some success. So it had a number of hits going against it, which I hope we're in part able to correct here by showcasing it as part of this themed month of uh, disability programming. Well, it's a lovely film and an intimate one. Let's watch it and we'll talk a little bit more afterwards from 1980. Here is Harold Russell co-starring with John Savage and David Morse in Inside Moves. I'm back with Lawrence Carter Long to talk a little bit more about Inside Moves. And Lawrence, we spoke earlier before the movie about the kind of lack of opportunities that Harold Russell would have had if he had actively tried to remain in Hollywood. Do you get the sense that it was truly lack of opportunities? Was it lack of interest on his part? Why do you think he didn't have more of a career? Could he have fought for one if he wanted to? I think the odds were against him. I think it was not so much lack of talent, but lack of imagination in terms of where the industry was at at that time. There was no pipeline for disabled actors. There was no way for somebody with a disability like Russell's to get the training that others, his non-disabled peers, would have gotten to get a career inside the film industry. And so I think weighing all of those odds, uh, stacking them up, made it seem almost insurmountable. I think at the time Russell began his acting career, things had started to shift, however, and we were starting to see more of a sense of independent living. People were fighting for disability rights. We were 10 years away from the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act. So those changes in culture, I think, made it possible to show this more nuanced portrayal of disabled characters in community in a film like Inside Moves in a way that simply was not possible when he made his first film in 1946. One other great actor in this film is Burt Remsen, who plays Stinky. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? What do you know about his journey? Burt Remsen had worked in the industry, had been an actor for a number of years. And during the making of a TV production of No Time for Sergeants, a crane fell on him and um, injured his back severely. Remsen continued to work in the industry, however, using his knowledge of the film and TV industry to be a casting director and to be a producer. And so when he was approached by Richard Donner to be in this film, and again, like Russell, read the script, he was convinced, and you can tell, he's really chewing up the scenery and having a blast with this performance. And I think he was really happy to be acting again, and this film and this role gave him an opportunity to do so. How would you articulate what Harold Russell represents in disability culture and in culture in general? I think it's very easy for people to kind of assume that a life in the arts, doing, creating, being an actor uh, is one thing. And then a, a life doing advocacy work or doing social justice work is a whole other thing. Harold Russell's story, to me, as somebody who benefited from many of the things that Russell helped put in place, shows that it's possible to do both and to be both. He started as an actor, but he used that platform to embark on a public speaking tour, public awareness campaigns. He was appointed first by, by Truman to the President's Committee on Employment of what was called the Handicap in those days. He became the head of AMVETS, working to reform the Veterans Administration. And so he continued to make a difference not only by breaking new ground with earning those Oscars in best years of our lives, but in the work that he did following that film before he came back to acting with Inside Moves. And I think that really shows an example of the ingenuity, of the ability to adapt that disabled people have. And Russell knew what his strengths were, and he was determined to sort of imply those to make the best possible society for all disabled people. Well, Lawrence, thank you so much. And this is just the beginning because you're going to be with me for another double feature next Sunday night and every Sunday night this month. So I'll see you soon. Thank you, Dave. And stick around because coming up next here on TCM is another great film, as always, uncut and commercial free. Don't go anywhere.